Welcome to the quarterly report interview where we take a closer look at the financial results and especially welcome to you, Anna Magnus. Thank you. Uh, we have now passed the third quarter of the year. Uh, what would you say, Magnus, how are we doing so far? Well, I think it looks pretty good. Uh, the results are fairly stable, you can say, and, uh, and we will come back to that, I'm sure, in this discussion. But we also have delivered several proof points of uh, what will be coming uh, our part of our strategy for the future to become fossil free within one generation. So I, I think this is a quarter showing that we are on the right track going forward. Um, and looking at the result uh, as such, uh, we see an increase in profit for the first nine months. Uh, what would you say, Anna? Which are the main contributors? Well, um, we have seen increased prices in the market, uh, which has an impact. But mainly we see increased uh, generation. Our nuclear operations have a record year, for example. And we can also see many of uh, the wind investments that we made now coming online. So that in combination with uh, strict cost control um, will mean that we, despite the fact that our heat business is doing um, worse this year due to deteriorating spreads, are still coming out on a stable level. Mm. Uh, you mentioned the electricity prices. The, they are on a quite high level right now. Uh, what is the reason as you see it and how does it affect us? It's true, they're high and they're also quite uh, volatile. Uh, and both the spring and the summer has been warm and uh, dry throughout most of Europe. Uh, that has especially driven up the Nordic uh, prices. And that has an impact on us. For the last couple of weeks, we see that we are back to a more normal uh, level in the hydrological balance due to rain. But it has uh, had an impact on our uh, gross margin. Uh, however, that is to a large extent um, uh, mitigated by the hedges that we have made. So the full effect is not seen in our results. It seems it has been an eventful uh, quarter um, in many aspects. Could you mention some highlights from your perspective, Magnus? Yeah, I think uh, I talked about the proof points in the beginning and, and certainly we have one big proof point and that's we inaugurated the Aberdeen wind farm, which is uh, 11 turbines outside Aberdeen where the, they are the biggest turbines in the world, 8.8 megawatt. Those are huge things, I can tell you there. I was there at the inauguration. Uh, and then, of course, we are starting retail in France, which I think is very interesting. It's a market that's about to be deregulated and the opportunities to grow there should be. Uh, that's a very interesting start. Uh, in Sweden, we have made agreements, uh, long-term agreements with a wind, a wind park where we will buy the electricity and we will also take care of the balancing act. We have also made uh, some agreement uh, to prepare for new investments in, in wind in Sweden. And then we have also made an investment, we have made an agreement with a Swedish real estate company about building infrastructure, infrastructure for uh, e-mobility. And the same thing you can say in the Netherlands where we have made an agreement with McDonald's that we will build fast chargers at the restaurants. And also at the outside the period actually we have announced now also that new one will be, take over the name Vattenfall and become uh, a real part of the family. So I think we're uh, lots of things happening in the right direction. But there are some challenges as well. Uh, on the distribution side in Sweden, the, the regulatory framework has uh, changed, um, which might affect our earnings. Um, at the same time, we have a heavy need for investments in our grids. How do we tackle this? Yeah, this is actually very cumbersome for us. Um, as you say, the regulation is changing and uh, it has been changing quite often, which is a problem uh, as such in a business that needs a stable investment conditions uh, in order to make the long term investments needed. Uh, in addition, the new regulation is putting a limit on the VAC, which is at a lower level than the corresponding regulatory models in other European countries. So this means a lower profitability, a lower cash flow, and consequently we will have to decrease our investments. And this is happening uh, in a period of time where more investments are needed, uh, both in order to um, onboard new capacity, new customers that would like to connect, for example, data centers or immobility e charging infrastructures. We have cities that are growing and needs more capacity. Uh, and on top of that, we, we want to and need to integrate all the renewable capacity that is being built. So this is uh, troublesome for us and will unfortunately mean that we need to decrease our investments into the distribution business. One thing that happened after the reporting period was that the city of Hamburg announced that it wanted to use its um, option to buy back the district 
heating grid uh, in the city. Um, now this is obviously a large part of our German heat operations. Uh, what is your view on this, Magnus? Well, first of all, of course, I think it's very unfortunate that we, we had to do this business in the sense that we wanted to keep it because I think we have done a good job and, and we also have good plans for the future. But it was politically decided uh, to, do, to go this way. And I, that's, of course, acceptable. Now we have to make sure that we make this transition in a, in a very good way. Uh, it doesn't change anything when it comes to our view on Germany as a market or Hamburg in a sense because in Hamburg we have a lot of operations. We sell electricity. We do decentral heating solutions. We have our wind business, uh, a lot of that concentrated there. We have the markets business. So for us it's going to be one of our centers in Germany even though we, we are now leaving the heat part. And then we have the heat business in Berlin, of course, where we have uh, managed now to deliver uh, earlier reductions in CO2 than previously planned, which I think we're doing in a very good way. So I don't see sort of any, n apart from the fact that we wanted to continue this business, any negative way in how we look on Germany as a development market and a very important market in Vattenfall. Now we have talked about the first nine months, um, but uh, what about for the rest of the year? Uh, what will be the most important things uh, going forward, Anna? Well, I think the volatility that we see in the market and the market prices and how to manage that is going to be a challenge. Uh, I think we'll probably see continued high CO2 prices, which will uh, hit our heat business because it's a cost for our heat business in, in Germany. Uh, we will need to continue to keep good control of the costs also the uh, last quarter. Uh, and I'm also looking forward to continue to see the increase in uh, customers that we see in, uh, in Germany. Uh, in France and also on the B2B side in UK. Any final conclusions from your side, Magnus? No, not more than that. I'd like to finish as we started, that we are on a journey. I think we're showing that we are really proving that we are on the direction we want uh, and that we continue that direction quite clearly. We have a lot, we identified lots of growth opportunities that we are about to pursue. So I think we, we look for a, a, a bright future, but it contains a lot of challenges at the same time just mentioned by you, Anna. So I think it's everything you can ask for in, in a business. Yeah, thank you to the both of you and uh, thank you for watching.